Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to go right off of your assessments. Um, look at yours if you have them in front of you. We're going to go through what's required. Okay? So let's start with definitions. So it says at the top to find each of the following terms using complete sentences, then describe how these processes cause plates to move. So let's talk about mantle convection cycles. What is a mantle convection cycle? Sam? Okay, magma heating and cooling that makes a cycle, right? And it causes plates to move. That's a good definition. Okay? Then how does that cause the plates to move? Okay, a lot of you gave me a, a definition and then gave me a definition again. I want a definition and then how does that make the plates move? So if I've got magma cycling in here, how does that cycling magma make the plate plate move? Okay, how does it pull it? Josiah? Okay, so we've got moving magma, right? As that moving magma comes next to the plate, it's going to pull it. So we could say something like, moving magma pulls the plate along with it. It's creating friction. What? It's creating friction. Good, great. Moving magma pulls the plate along with it by friction. Okay, so we've defined what a magma convection cycle is. Moving magma as it gets heated and cooled in the Earth's mantle, right? Then we can say that causes them to move by the moving magma pulls plates along with friction. Okay, so there are two different things there. And one word responses like movement, or it pulls it, doesn't, you've got to explain how it moves it. And what was that definition again? So it could be um, cycles of magma created by heating and cooling. That's fine. Okay? Let's go to the next one. What is slab pull? Okay. okay. Anything else to add? Um, yeah. Slab pull is, is like, it's the, I don't know how to say it. It's that part right there where it goes down. Subduction zone. Yeah. And then the part before it, it's pretty much where it's becoming liquid into density going into the subduction zone. Okay, so the pulling of a plate at a subduction zone, right? Pulling of a plate towards the center of the earth at a subduction zone. Okay, that's a good definition of slab pull. How does slab pull cause plates to move? Go ahead. Good. When it pulls in the subduction zone, it pulls everything else with it, right? If I pull on your, I'm not going to say that. I say, I was going to say, if I pull on your finger. <laughs> Okay, if I pull on your finger, I pull on your whole arm, right? If I pull on this part of the plate, I pull on the whole plate, okay? So if gravity is pulling this to the center of the earth, I'm pulling the whole plate with it, okay? Some explanation of that. Notice at the bottom, it says, the definition and diagram reference both temperature differences and density as causes of plate movement for convection cycles and slab pull. In our definition, we talked about temperature differences. Here we need to talk about density, okay? At a subduction zone, the plates are more dense and so it gets pulled more towards the center of the earth. How does that cause the plate to move? As it pulls the center of the earth, it pulls the rest of the plate along with it, okay? Any clarifications I could give on that? Okay, notes, I don't see you. Very, very few people taking any notes. I also saw very, very few people that got it on the assessment, or the formative assessment. So that might be something to make sure you have discussion. Cause for effect. Nothing's changing. Mr. Jenks says, okay, I'll keep moving on if you don't want to write it down. Okay, all right, so let's look at this. We have all of these things. It says, using the diagram below, diagram and label the two main processes, natural convection cycles and slab pull that cause plates to move, including all of the following. So let's go through those and make sure we do that. Labels and colors or colors showing differences in temperatures. Okay, so what are we talking about? We're talking about differences in temperatures. Which of our two processes? 
Pam? So I'm drawing where it gets hotter at the core okay. and cooler at the surface. Hotter at the core, cooler in the surface. So okay. let's look at this. Which way is this plate moving? That way. Okay, so this plate's moving this way. So which way does my magma cycle have to be going? Okay. Is that my only magma convection cycle? Which which way is this plate moving? That way. So which way should my convection cycle go? Same way. Okay, you can label these hot, medium, cold, whatever you want. I'm just using colors because it's faster. Okay, is that all of my convection cycles? Nope. Okay. okay. And again, we're doing much better as a class than we did individually on this assessment. So make sure you have all of these things that we're doing. Okay? So which way should my convection cycle go? Okay? So let's plot our assessment again. It says labels or colors showing differences in temperatures. Do I have that? Yes. Arrows to show the movement of plates and magma. Do I have that? Okay. Very, 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 very few of you showed me the directions of plates. Were. Very few. Okay. I had some people showing me plates of magma, but I didn't see anybody that maybe one that had all of our convection cycles moving the same directions as our plate boundaries. Okay. So that's something that you all need to correct. Text or labels to show that where the two processes are working. Have I labeled where convection cycles are and where slab pull is? No. Have I? Was it labeled or is there text? Is there a label or a text? No. Okay. So I'm going to say this is a convection cycle. This is a convection cycle. And this is a Okay, where do I label slab pole? Prima, where do I label slab pole? Where do slab poles happen? Sydney? Production zone. So I'm going to label. Okay, I'm going to show where that is. I can put the arrow down here and say slab pole. I can make it green and put over here and say slab pole equals green arrow and do it on there. I can do whatever I want, but you can put it anywhere that you want. Okay? And labels and arrows to identify plate boundary types. I think I only have two people tell me which plate boundary types I have. What are my two types of plate boundaries that I've got on here? Sydney? Where's the conversion? And what's over here? Okay, now have I done all of the things that it's asked me for? Yes, let me check my rubric. Definitions and explanations of how each process moves plates is correct. If they're like the ones we talked about, then that's fine. Convection cycles and slab pull directions align with plate boundary movements. Do my directions align? Yes. Yes. If I'm missing an arrow, do my directions align? No. no. If it says this way, do my directions align? No. Okay. So that was mark us off on that part of the rubric if we had that incorrect. <laughs> Definitions and diagram reference both the temperature differences and the density as a cause of plate movement for convection cycles and slab pull. Before I said density. So here I need to say density. <laughs> Okay, and I've added a few things to the rubric from looking at yours. That's always what I do. Give you a formative assessment, and from the responses that you give, I can make my rubric better. And I can say these are things you need, these are things you don't want to have. Okay? Questions about this? Yeah. What is the slab 
Oh, that was an example of a different way to label. Oh, okay. If I, so this is my legend. Oh, okay. If I said slap oh, hole is a green arrow, then I can come down here and change this to green arrow. Right, and then I don't have to have that. Okay? So study that. Make sure you understand how convention cycles work, how they move plates. And you can label and describe and define. So it's usually oceanic crust, which is more dense than continental crust, which is why it goes down. Quick form of assessment, and then you have whatever you want to use. 